Hello, welcome back. It's Robbie. This is Nas Compares, and welcome back to Data News of the Week on the 13th of May 2022. This is the video, as always, where we go through all the little blibs and blobs and news stories that involve data that we squeeze into a single video because we couldn't get it in any other, any other videos. It's been a real heavy week for routers, right? And just give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of next week and the week after. Currently, I am working on some big comparisons there with different routers. That's what it's kind of what I'm going to get back to after this video. But let's crack on with news this week. It's a good little mix of odd and interesting stories. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about WD's uh, big reveals earlier this week. They did a lot of big product reveals. WD, generally a brand that's... You know, they talk a lot more about the enterprise stuff, but this is an incredible mix, and they did a bunch of kind of big reveals at their big event. Um, and yes, you can go to their official blog pages and go through some of their news posts. And most of the information is there regarding the new drives, the 22 and the 26 TB uh, SMR drive there, as well as some of the SSD stuff that we're going to talk about in a moment. And again, they've done quite a few, uh, quite a few posts talking about their big WD What's Next event. But these are some seriously dry content so if you want a lot more information i've narrowed it down to the two best articles i could find uh, the first one over on storage review uh, and again this is um harold fritz um, and he covered a bunch of the different stuff from the wd event there but the article he's done on the hard drive side of things everything from the 22 tb and that massive uh plated drive there with 2.2 tb uh, on each layer there it's a real detailed article there, and you can get some great images there of the 26TB. Um, and again, bear in mind that 26TB, it's SMR. You know, this don't. This is a different league of things, and neither one of these drives is commercially available yet. It's going to go straight to cloud and data center. This is just something that's been in process, and of course, as you can see on screen, Optinand is the name of the game here. This is how WD has really moved forward um, with their um, e uh, uh, energy assisted magnetic recording there um, and again they were also work working on microwave as well but as you can see we are talking WD Red Pro for NAS we're talking gold we're talking um, all of the kind of surveillance stuff there as well this is something they're rolling out across their different uh, portfolio product ranges there but again do bear in mind that 26 TB there SMR so don't get too excited about that currently um, as mentioned there is also uh, the SSD side of things and the gamer side of things. And again, although there was an article on this on Storage Review, I did think uh, the Andatech was a lot more concise about this. And they talked a lot more about the different kinds of SSDs there. And one that we did talk about on Data News the Week a few months ago, in fact, was that elusive part number, the SN850X. And it turns out to be a higher performing version of that WD Black SN850. So we already saw the lower performance one, that SN7700 that we talked about there, the DRAMless drive. This is a higher performing WD Black NVMe 7000 megs type SSD, cracking out at 7300 megabytes per second sequential read there. This is kind of the drive that they've released to compete with the Seagate uh, Firecuda 530s and those other, uh, you know, the latest, some uh, the uh, increases on some of the other SSDs out there, not from Samsung, they only stuck a heat sink on it. Um, but alongside that, there is also the gaming dock and some smaller capacity uh, M2 drives as well. So I do recommend you go through that article because there's been a big data dump of information there covering everything from PCIe Gen 4 to USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, that 20 gigabit per second uh, connection there, with some great hardware being revealed at this event. Next up, bit of a weird one. I don't know if any of you guys remembered this from last year. This was uh, the Synology April Fools from 2021. It was Fresh Station 1. It was the Synology Fridge. And it was a tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, article. Just They do this every year on their uh, April Fools type stuff, like they did the Floppy Station this year. And, you know, it's well put together. The page is still live, which I'm always surprised that Synology do that because a lot of brands kill off April Fools stuff after a few months. Um... But the reason I bring this up is for those of you that follow the, uh, Reddit, you know, if you go into you know our Synology, you will find um, information that someone is has got video station running on a fridge, on a fridge of all things. Now, the concise details of this 
aren't massive and if you break down into the comments what you find is a combination of people getting very annoyed about Samsung fridges uh, which I thought was good but there's some great punmanship in there as well fantastic punmanship um, but there isn't really any big details on how this was done uh, obviously there's generally a lot of these smart fridges run on some kind of uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi or Android kernel but as you can see in some of the images if you get real close at first you think yeah that's definitely the video station app uh, but when you break into the other image there, you can see that there's information of a web link there. So whether this is uh, the app running in kind of like a portal tunnel version, like when you can run Android apps within Chrome, or if this is the app managing to be uh, uh, installed on there, I'm not 100% certain, but it's still quite intriguing. Think about that when you need like recipes or if you're trying to follow cooking tutorials and stuff like that that is something we've already kind of seen hence why this kind of technology would exist in the first place but the idea that you could portal into your nas with a proprietary app yum yum love that and although this has absolutely no official bank we're going to ignore that alarm no backup from synology at all it's still great to see stuff like this getting in the modern community. I'm going to switch that alarm off. Now, the quick one, this is to do with QNAP products and a couple of part numbers that we've kind of kept our eyes on online have started blobbing to the surface there, the TS-262 and the TS-462. Now, there's no full product pages for anything like that there, but generally when products start coming to market from any of these brands, one of the earliest ways in which information can be revealed on these products, and this goes for any brand really, is when parts and accessories and replacement stuff appears on official brands bits and bobs accessory pages and in this case we've started seeing these memory modules appearing for these NASs and we kind of already knew these were coming almost certainly these are going to be dual core versions of that uh, 64 series that we're talking about there and this is the 62 series they're clearly going for a two prong way and this isn't the first time we've talked about the 62 series indeed there was the China only um, series of devices the 262c and the 462c and I, i'm pretty sure we're, gonna, sure we're going to be seeing very similar hardware to this now of course in china some of these products have already started rolling out like the review you're seeing here um over on inf.news and this goes into a little detail about that dual core processor that's inside m2 uh, ssd compatibility there 2.5 gbe and that kind of stuff in the in kind of internal specs and hardware and i think what we're almost certainly going to see is kind of this nas in a different chassis maybe with a little change an extra um 2.5 gpe slot there i don't think we're gonna see pci upgradability because normally that would mean those pcie cards would appear here and we're not seeing them but it's still nice to know that these are in development and things that looks like they are going to be coming soon because i think the dual core series from um qnap there which would be the ts uh 451d2 and the 251d are looking a little long in the tooth and with this new intel quad core series coming on the horizon they're already available in the east but not in the west so annoying um it's nice to know that the dual core series isn't getting left behind and finally that is right true nas core went to 13 it's fully released and available apparently it should be available for you to action and update from TrueNAS 12, uh, that's Core, of course, and Enterprise. And there's a breakdown and details of uh, the changes that you're going to be seeing by making that upgrade, of course. And again, that is true. Uh, TrueNAS Core and Enterprise, not Scale, the Linux one. Um, and again, if you go to their website, there's a lot more information about the nature of the next six to 12 months as they go through further testing and its enterprise suitability and more uh, and where they are kind of in the testing process uh, prior and up to this point what features are there where the fixes and improvements are and of course you can head over to some of the links to look at things and some of the resources they've put up recently so for example you've got the scalability demo that's got 1200 um drives in this array for you to watch in the enclosure um just over enclosures obviously multiple ones they're being managed by true scale 13 uh, and then on top, uh, not scale true core 13 sorry and then on top of that you've got their live q a that i just missed prepping for this recording today um I've looked at some of the comments that have already been added in there and I recommend you check it out. It's only, you know, it's 35 minutes long. That's not a large amount of time, but do watch it because it does address some of the early adoption questions and some of the things moving over from 12 to do with synchronization and kind of the broader storage aspects for you to cover there. And last thing just before in this video, just a nice little comment in the TrueNAS section where a rare treat or anyone that ever follows regular you know forums and communities will know that whenever there's a big update or big patch in software 
generally you hear more people saying it's going wrong or it's not updating and it's just a lovely rare treat that just after it was rolled out chaps like this would come out and go yep yeah, successfully updated quality software thanks a lot that is a rare treat and i wish we saw more of that online but otherwise this has been dating news of the week click a like if you've enjoyed it use the free advice section subscribe and of course stay tuned for when we upgrade our TrueNAS server up to TrueNAS 13 and do a lovely updated video on our review where we look at just exactly what TrueNAS Core 13 can provide us. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.